Murray Bookchin January 14, 1921 to July 30, 2006, was an American social theorist, author, orator, historian, and political philosopher. A pioneer in the ecology movement, Bookchin formulated and developed the theory of social ecology and urban planning, within anarchist, libertarian socialist, and ecological thought. He was the author of two dozen books covering topics in politics, philosophy, history, urban affairs, and ecology. Among the most important were Our Synthetic Environment Post-Scarcity Anarchism 1971, The Ecology of Freedom 1982, and Urbanization Without Cities 1987. In the late 1990s he became disenchanted with the increasingly apolitical lifestylism of the contemporary anarchist movement, stopped referring to himself as an anarchist, and founded his own libertarian socialist ideology called communalism, which seeks to reconcile Marxist and anarchist thought. Bookchin was a prominent anti-capitalist and advocate of society's decentralization along ecological and democratic lines. His ideas have influenced social movements since the 1960s, including the New Left, the anti-nuclear movement, the anti-globalization movement, Occupy Wall Street, and more recently, the democratic confederalism of Rojava. He was a central figure in the American Green Movement and the Burlington Greens. Biography <inaudible> 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 Bookchin was born in New York City to Russian Jewish immigrants Nathan Bookchin and Rose Kaluskaya Bookchin. He grew up in the Bronx, where his grandmother, Zeitel, a socialist revolutionary, imbued him with Russian populist ideas. After her death in 1930, he joined the Young Pioneers, the Communist Youth Organization for children 9 to 14 and the Young Communist League for older children in 1935. He attended the workers' school near Union Square, where he studied Marxism. In the late 1930s he broke with Stalinism and gravitated toward Trotskyism, joining the Socialist Workers' Party In the early 1940s he worked in a foundry in Bayonne, New Jersey where he was an organizer and shop steward for the United Electrical Workers as well as a recruiter for the SWP. Within the SWP he adhered to the Goldman Morrow faction, which broke away after the war ended. He was an auto worker and UAW member at the time of the Great General Motors strike of 1945–46. In 1949, while speaking to a Zionist youth organization at City College, Bookchin met a mathematics student, Beatrice Appelstein, whom he married in 1951. They were married for 12 years and lived together for 35, remaining close friends and political allies for the rest of his life. They had two children, Debbie, and Joseph. From 1947, he collaborated with a fellow lapsed Trotskyist, the German expatriate Joseph Weber, in New York in the Movement for a Democracy of Content, a group of 20 or so post Trotskyists who collectively edited the periodical Contemporary Issues, a magazine for a democracy of content. Contemporary issues embraced utopianism. The periodical provided a forum for the belief that previous attempts to create utopia had founded on the necessity of toil and drudgery, but now modern technology had obviated the need for human toil, a liberatory development. To achieve this, post-scarcity society, Bookchin developed a theory of ecological decentralism. The magazine published Bookchin's first articles, including the pathbreaking. The Problem of Chemicals in Food", 1952. In 1958, Bookchin defined himself as an anarchist, seeing parallels between anarchism and ecology. His first book, Our Synthetic Environment, was published under the pseudonym Lewis Herber in 1962, a few months before Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. The book described a broad range of environmental ills but received little attention because of its political radicalism. In 1964, Bookchin joined the Congress of Racial Equality and protested racism at the 1964 World's Fair. During 1964–67, while living on Manhattan's Lower East Side, he co-founded and was the principal figure in the New York Federation of Anarchists. His groundbreaking essay, "'Ecology and Revolutionary Thought' introduced ecology as a concept in radical politics. 
In 1968, he founded another group that published the influential Anarchos magazine, which published that and other innovative essays on post-scarcity and on ecological technologies such as solar and wind energy, and on decentralization and miniaturization. Lecturing throughout the United States, he helped popularize the concept of ecology to the counterculture. His widely republished 1969 essay, Listen, Marxist, warned students for a democratic society in vain against an impending takeover by a Marxist group. Once again the dead are walking in our midst. He wrote, ironically, draped in the name of Marx, the man who tried to bury the dead of the 19th century. So the revolution of our own day can do nothing better than parody. In turn, the October Revolution of 1917 and the Civil War of 1918 to 1920, with its class line, its Bolshevik Party, its proletarian dictatorship, its puritanical morality, and even its slogan, Soviet power. These and other influential 1960s essays are anthologized in Post Scarcity Anarchism, 1971. In 1969–1970, he taught at Alternate U, a counter-cultural radical school based on 14th Street in Manhattan. In 1971, he moved to Burlington, Vermont with a group of friends, to put into practice his ideas of decentralization. In the fall of 1973, he was hired by Goddard College to lecture on technology. His lectures led to a teaching position and to the creation of the Social Ecology Studies Program in 1974 and the Institute for Social Ecology soon thereafter, of which he became the director. In 1974, he was hired by Ramapo College in Mawa, New Jersey, where he quickly became a full professor. The EYES was a hub for experimentation and study of appropriate technology in the 1970s. In 1977–78 he was a member of the Spruce Mountain Affinity Group of the Clamshell Alliance. Also in 1977, he published The Spanish Anarchists, a history of the Spanish anarchist movement up to the Revolution of 1936. During this period, Bookchin forged some ties with the nascent libertarian movement. He spoke at a Libertarian Party convention and contributed to a newsletter edited by Carl Hess. In 1976, he told a Libertarian activist that if I were a voting man, I'd vote for McBride—LP nominee Roger McBride, that is. Bookchin's affiliations to libertarianism during this period reflect his disillusionment with the authoritarianism of Marxist-Leninists, resulting in him stating in a 1979 interview with Jeff Rigenbach that he felt closer to free market libertarians who defend the rights of the individual at least when compared to the totalitarian Marxist-Leninists. Nevertheless, Bookchin rejected the types of libertarianism that advocated unconstrained individualism, in From Urbanization to Cities published in 1987 as The Rise of Urbanization and the Decline of Citizenship, Bookchin traced the democratic traditions that influenced his political philosophy and defined the implementation of the libertarian municipalism concept. A few years later, The Politics of Social Ecology, written by his partner of 19 years, Janet Beale, briefly summarized these ideas. In 1995, Bookchin lamented the decline of American anarchism into primitivism, anti-technologism, neo-situationism, individual self-expression, and «ad hoc adventurism» at the expense of forming a social movement. Arthur Verslius said, Bookchin, describes himself as a «social anarchist» because he looks forward to a «gentle» societal revolution. Bookchin has lit out after those whom he terms «lifestyle anarchists». The publication of Social Anarchism or Lifestyle Anarchism in 1995, criticizing this tendency, was startling to anarchists. Thereafter Bookchin concluded that American anarchism was essentially individualistic and broke with anarchism publicly in 1999. He placed his ideas into a new political ideology, communalism spelled with a capital C to differentiate it from other forms of communalism, a form of libertarian socialism that retains his ideas about assembly democracy and the necessity of decentralization of settlement, power, money, influence, agriculture, manufacturing, etc. In addition to his political writings, Bookchin wrote extensively on philosophy, calling his ideas dialectical naturalism. 
The dialectical writings of Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, which articulate a developmental philosophy of change and growth, seem to him to lend themselves to an organic, even ecological approach. Although Hegel exercised a considerable influence on Bookchin, he was not, in any sense, a Hegelian. His philosophical writings emphasize humanism, rationality, and the ideals of the Enlightenment. His last major published work was The Third Revolution, a four-volume history of the libertarian movements in European and American revolutions. He continued to teach at the Eyes until 2004. Bookchin died of congestive heart failure on July 30, 2006, at his home in Burlington at the age of 85. Thought General sociological and psychological views Bookchin was critical of class-centered analysis of Marxism and simplistic anti-state forms of libertarianism and liberalism and wished to present what he saw as a more complex view of societies. In The Ecology of Freedom, The Emergence and Dissolution of Hierarchy, he says that, My use of the word hierarchy in the subtitle of this work is meant to be provocative. There is a strong theoretical need to contrast hierarchy with the more widespread use of the words class and state. Careless use of these terms can produce a dangerous simplification of social reality. To use the words hierarchy, class, and state interchangeably, as many social theorists do, is insidious and obscurantist. This practice, in the name of a classless or libertarian, Society could easily conceal the existence of hierarchical relationships and a hierarchical sensibility, both of which, even in the absence of economic exploitation or political coercion, would serve to perpetuate unfreedom. Bookchin also points to an accumulation of hierarchical systems throughout history that has occurred up to contemporary societies, which tends to determine the human collective and individual psyche. The objective history of the social structure becomes internalized as a subjective history of the psychic structure. Heinous as my view may be to modern Freudians, it is not the discipline of work but the discipline of rule that demands the repression of internal nature. This repression then extends outward to external nature as a mere object of rule and later of exploitation. This mentality permeates our individual psyches in a cumulative form up to the present day not merely as capitalism but as the vast history of hierarchical society from its inception. <laughs> <laughs> Humanity's environmental predicament Murray Bookchin's clarion call about humanity's collision course with the natural world, Our Synthetic Environment, was published six months before Rachel Carson's Silent Spring. Bookchin rejected Barry Commoner's belief that the environmental crisis could be traced to technological choices, Paul Ehrlich's views that it could be traced to overpopulation, or the even more pessimistic view that traces this crisis to human nature. Rather, Bookchin felt that our environmental predicament is the result of the cancerous logic of capitalism, a system aimed at maximizing profit instead of enriching human lives. By the very logic of its grow or die imperative, capitalism may well be producing ecological crises that gravely imperil the integrity of life on this planet. The solution to this crisis is not a return to hunter gatherer societies, which Bookchin characterized as xenophobic and warlike. Bookchin likewise opposed, "...a politics of mere protest, lacking programmatic content, a proposed alternative, and a movement to give people direction and continuity. We need a constant awareness that a given society's irrationality is deep-seated, that its serious pathologies are not isolated problems that can be cured piecemeal but must be solved by sweeping changes in the often hidden sources of crisis and suffering." That awareness alone is what can hold a movement together, give it continuity, preserve its message and organization beyond a given generation, and expand its ability to deal with new issues and developments. 
The answer then lies in communalism, a system encompassing a directly democratic political organization anchored in loosely confederated popular assemblies, decentralization of power, absence of domination of any kind, and replacing capitalism with human-centered forms of production. Topic: <laughs> Social ecology. In the history of political ecology, social ecology is not a movement but a theory primarily associated with Bookchin and elaborated over his body of work. He presents a utopian philosophy of human evolution that combines the nature of biology and society into a third, thinking nature, beyond biochemistry and physiology, which he argues is a more complete, conscious, ethical, and rational nature. Humanity, by this line of thought, is the latest development from the long history of organic development on Earth. Bookchin's social ecology proposes ethical principles for replacing a society's propensity for hierarchy and domination with that of democracy and freedom. Bookchin wrote about the effects of urbanization on human life in the early 1960s during his participation in the civil rights and related social movements. Bookchin then began to pursue the connection between ecological and social issues, culminating with his best-known book, The Ecology of Freedom, which he had developed over a decade. His argument, that human domination and destruction of nature follows from social domination between humans, was a breakthrough position in the growing field of ecology. Life develops from self-organization and evolutionary cooperation symbiosis. Bookchin writes of proliterate societies organized around mutual need but ultimately overrun by institutions of hierarchy and domination, such as city-states and capitalist economies, which he attributes uniquely to societies of humans and not communities of animals. He proposes confederation between communities of humans run through democracy rather than through administrative logistics. Libertarian municipalism Starting in the 1970s, Bookchin argued that the arena for libertarian social change should be the municipal level. In The Next Revolution, Bookchin stresses the link that libertarian municipalism has with his earlier philosophy of social ecology. He writes Libertarian municipalism constitutes the politics of social ecology, a revolutionary effort in which freedom is given institutional form in public assemblies that become decision making bodies. Bookchin proposes that these institutional forms must take place within differently scaled local areas. In a 2001 interview, he summarized his views this way. The overriding problem is to change the structure of society so that people gain power. The best arena to do that is the municipality—the city, town, and village—where we have an opportunity to create a face-to-face -face democracy." In 1980 Bookchin used the term, "...libertarian municipalism." to describe a system in which libertarian institutions of directly democratic assemblies would oppose and replace the state with a confederation of free municipalities. Libertarian municipalism intends to create a situation in which the two powers—the municipal confederations and the nation-state—cannot coexist. Its supporters—communalists—believe it to be the means to achieve a rational society, and its structure becomes the organization of society. Legacy and influence Though Bookchin, by his own recognition, failed to win over a substantial body of supporters during his own lifetime, his ideas have nonetheless influenced movements and thinkers across the globe. Notable among these is the Kurdistan Workers' Party PKK, an organization in Turkey which has fought the Turkish state since the 1980s to try to secure greater political and cultural rights for the country's Kurds. Though founded on a rigid Marxist-Leninist ideology, the PKK has seen a shift in its thought and aims since the capture and imprisonment of its leader, Abdullah Öcalan, in 1999. Ocalan began reading a variety of post-Marxist political theory while in prison, and found particular interest in Bookchin's works. Ocalan attempted in early 2004 to arrange a meeting with Bookchin through his lawyers, describing himself as Bookchin's 
student, eager to adapt his thought to Middle Eastern society. Bookchin was too ill to accept the request. In May 2004 Bookchin conveyed this message. My hope is that the Kurdish people will one day be able to establish a free, rational society that will allow their brilliance once again to flourish. They are fortunate indeed to have a leader of Mr. O'Callan's talents to guide them." When Bookchin died in 2006, the PKK hailed the American thinker as, "...one of the greatest social scientists of the 20th century," and vowed to put his theory into practice. Democratic confederalism, the variation on communalism developed by Ocalan in his writings and adopted by the PKK, does not outwardly seek Kurdish rights within the context of the formation of an independent state separate from Turkey. The PKK claims that this project is not envisioned as being only for Kurds, but rather for all peoples of the region, regardless of their ethnic, national, or religious background. Rather, it promulgates the formation of assemblies and organizations beginning at the grassroots level to enact its ideals in a non-state framework beginning at the local level. It also places a particular emphasis on securing and promoting women's rights. The PKK has had some success in implementing its program, through organizations such as the Democratic Society Congress DTK, which coordinates political and social activities within Turkey, and the Koma Sivakan Kurdistan KCK, which does so across all countries where Kurds live. <laughs> Major writings Our Synthetic Environment 1962 Crisis in Our Cities 1965 Desire and Need 1967 Post-scarcity anarchism 1971 and 2004 ISBN 1-904859-06-2 The Limits of the City 1973 ISBN 0-06-091013-5 the Spanish Anarchists, The Heroic Years 1977 and 1998. ISBN 1-873176-04-X. Toward an Ecological Society 1980. ISBN 0-919618-98-7. The Ecology of Freedom, The Emergence and Dissolution of Hierarchy 1982 and 2005. ISBN 1-904859-26-7. The Modern Crisis 1986. ISBN 0-86571-083-X. The Rise of Urbanization and the Decline of Citizenship 1987 and 1992. ISBN 978-0-87156-706-2. Remaking Society 1990 and 1998. ISBN 0-921689-02-0. The Philosophy of Social Ecology, Essays on Dialectical Naturalism 1990 and 1996 Montreal, Black Rose Books ISBN 978-1-55164-019-8. To Remember Spain 1994 ISBN 1-873176-87-2 Reenchanting Humanity 1995 ISBN 0-304-32843-X The Third Revolution. Popular Movements in the Revolutionary Era 1996 to 2003 London and New York, Continuum. ISBN 0-304-33594-0, four volumes Social Anarchism or Lifestyle Anarchism, An Unbridgeable Chasm 1997, ISBN 1-873176-83-X. The Politics of Social Ecology, Libertarian Municipalism 1997, by Janet Beale Montreal, Black Rose Books. ISBN 1-55164-100-3. Anarchism, Marxism and the Future of the Left. Interviews and Essays, 1993–1998 Edinburgh and San Francisco, A.K. Press. ISBN 1-873176-35X. The Murray Bookchin Reader 1999, edited by Janet Beale Black Rose Books. 
ISBN 978-1551641188 Social Ecology and Communalism, AK Press, 2007 the Next Revolution, Popular Assemblies and the Promise of Direct Democracy, Verso Books 2015. See also Eco-Socialism History of the Green Party of the United States Outline of Libertarianism <laughs>